Quick question. Can you guess what this is from? Or how about this? Well, both of these projects were directed by Spike Jones, with the latter being the 2013 film Her. The former, however, featuring Christopher Walken is actually the very famous music video for the song Weapon of Choice by Fatboy Slim. Music videos are a fascinating medium because even though they use traditional filmmaking techniques, they differ from those of a feature film or a musical, and stand entirely on their own. Like all mediums, the music video has evolved enormously over the years. We Can Work It Out by The Beatles, for example, is considered to be the first music video broadcast on television, and they created this video as a way to promote their record releases without having to make in-person appearances. In 1966, the Beatles recorded the video for Paperback Writer, where they would begin exploring a cinematic language beyond just the live performance. The band's and Peter Goldman's successes established the music video as a valid platform, and by the end of the 1960s, artists and labels started to finally interact more with experimental filmmakers, which resulted in the medium becoming more avant-garde. In 1974, Queen would release Bohemian Rhapsody, the song that is widely credited as the first global hit single for which an accompanying video was central to the marketing strategy. It was this music video that also paved the way for the launch of MTV in 1981. With the release of MTV and the exploding popularity of music videos in the 1980s, productions became more elaborate and expensive. The worlds of film and music increasingly merged with the landmark music videos such as Thriller and Bad which was directed by Martin Scorsese. Also emerging from the world of music videos was a new wave of incredibly talented directors such as David Fincher, Spike Jones, and Michel Rangy, who directed Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. In the contemporary world of music videos, narratives are seen far less. Music videos have evolved to now accompany the music, opposed to potentially detract from it. Imagery found within videos can be entirely unrelated to the lyrical content of the song. They can be incredibly colourful and use an extensive amount of jump cuts or slow motion. In film, music is added to enhance the visuals, whereas with music videos, video is added to enhance the sound. They are in this way entirely opposite from one another. But what if you were to direct a feature film like a music video? How exactly would that look and feel? Well, I think it would look something like this. Welcome to the fascinating cinema of Japanese director and auteur, Tetsuya Nakashima. To be completely honest with you, Nakashima's films are... Fucking great, yeah. His films are so incredibly different from the cinema of some of his Japanese counterparts whom I also love such as Koreeda or Hamaguchi. With every film, Nakashima consistently pushes the boundaries of what he can do. He has made comedies, horrors, thrillers, and some films that are even in between genres. However, what sets Nakashima apart is not what genre his films are in or what themes they explore, but rather his distinct cinematic style. While Nakashima's breakthrough film as a director was the film Kamikaze Girls, for this video I would specifically like to focus on the style of 2006's Memories of Matsuko and 2010's Confessions. Stylistically, Memories of Matsuko is definitely similar to a more traditional musical, but even then it is slightly different. Let's take the young girls of Rochefort, for example, Jacques Demy's magnum opus in a film that I absolutely adore. Demy's musical sequences consist of longer takes within the boundaries of a single physical location. His camera work is minimal, as the emphasis is placed entirely on the song and dance. Memories of Mexico, however, operates differently. Musical sequences are in the form of a montage, where the camera constantly changes location and character. This disconnected style works incredibly well, 
as these montages can cover several years of time and further reinforce the concept of memory found within the film. Memories of Matsuko is colourful and fantastical, but beneath it all is a rather tragic story. The film disarms you with humour, before leaving you with a very emotional ending. Memories of Matsuko is my favourite Nakashima film, but it was with confessions that he really pushed his music video style aesthetic. Seeking reinvention, Confessions is thematically very different from anything Nakashima had previously worked on. This is by all accounts a very dark story, and this is reflected in the film's drab colour palette. While Memories of Matsuko had musical sequences placed within the film, Confessions instead acts as one big music video. The audio found within Confessions comes before its visuals. Its soundtrack, which even features Radiohead, is the rhythm and connective tissue of the entire film. When music isn't playing or is stopped, it is always used to great narrative effect. Paired with the audio are some key visual elements as well, such as flashbacks, dissolves, and most extensively, slow motion. The film used high-speed cameras for the slow motion sections, and they are more than just a feast for the eyes. Confessions opens with a 30 minute or so monologue given by the teacher. While this sounds somewhat dull on paper, it is edited in such an engaging way that you don't feel its length at all. During the course of the monologue, there is a clear disconnect between the teacher and her students. This disconnect is visually reinforced by the use of slow motion, and the use of a shift lens, which sometimes places the students in a different focus. One of the most important themes found in Confessions is loneliness, as all of the main characters within the story experience this in some form or another. The use of slow motion here once again reinforces this ideal, and adds a poetic beauty to the film. I think it's remarkable how Nakashima has been able to take key stylistic elements of music videos that purposely disconnect audience members and repurpose them in his films to further his narrative. Everything comes together so seamlessly, and it's unlike anything else I have ever seen. It's no surprise then that fellow auteur and stylist Michael Mann listed Confessions in his top 10 favourite films for the most recent sight and sound poll in 2022. Nakashima's world mirrors our own in many ways. It is unfair, stupid, and dirty, but also very beautiful. He has such a unique and interesting cinematic language that deserves to be more recognised, and for anyone who may be unfamiliar with his works, Zehi mite kudasai.